This morning on The Young and the Restless Abby agrees to go out with Divin, Adam finds out Victoria is over McCall, and Chance asks Sharon out. Sally puts her palm on her belly, takes up her phone, and then puts it down again as she sits in society. When she sees Nate, she complains that she isn't feeling well. I fear there may be something wrong with my infant. Chance, while sitting on the terrace of Crimson Lights, makes a phone call to inquire on the status of the toxicology results on Phyllis's blood. Abby walks in as he's hanging up and greets him with, Hello, Chance. He only gives her a blank stare. As Sharon, the coffee shop's barista, is preoccupied with something else, Adam places his regular order. She says she's sorry and that she's just trying to take everything in. Phyllis died late last night. Adam is taken aback. Lily and Devin have a conversation in the penthouse about how devastated Phyllis' children are. She is confident that Daniel appreciates having Devin in his life. Lily hopes they don't have such a deep understanding of her pain. It seems that Devin would like to keep talking about Chancellor Winters. Victoria, upon visiting her parents at Newman, inquires about Nicholas's health. Victor says it will take a while. The conversation turns to Summer, who is blocking their participation at the memorial. Victor directs the topic of discussion with Tucker. Victoria claims the conversation was fruitless and declares she is withdrawing their bid to purchase the company. I think Victor was surprised. Victoria says it's been a problem thus far. Victor is upset because he feels she should have asked his opinion first. Victoria chides him, saying that she is the CEO of Newman. Victor claims he hid her there. Now he knows it's all about Adam. Victoria categorically refutes the claim. Victor presses her for an explanation of her opposition to Adam returning to the family. Victoria sneers at the idea that giving him a firm is a reflection of his achievement. She reminds her dad that if he's set on giving Adam McCall unlimited, he should do it without Newman's involvement. Remember who handed you this company? Victor warns her. They take a seat, and Adam muses aloud on how quickly Phyllis vanished. He finds the fact that she married Stark strange. They're concerned about Nick's well-being. After the deaths of Ray and Cassie, Sharon believes she can help others, therefore she hopes he will come to her. Friend Nick will get in touch with her, Adam says. He urges her to remember herself under his care. Victor suddenly texts Adam, asking him to come to society to talk about McCall. He assures Sharon that he will get back to her as soon as possible. As she looks around, Sharon spots Abby and Chance out on the terrace. Abby expresses her appreciation to Chance on the patio. He claims he's merely carrying out orders. Abby says she has been searching for him. There's something I want to talk to you about. When he asks if Dom is fine, she confirms that he is. She needs to tell him the truth, even if he doesn't want to hear it. Devin had requested that Dominic and I relocate in with him. She hasn't made up her mind yet, but she would want to talk to him first before making visitations any more uncomfortable than they already are. You're genuinely asking me for my opinion on this, Chance exclaims in shock. After spending the night in the Neil-themed lounge, Devin and Lily discuss how the news about Phyllis this morning brought back painful memories of his death. No one wants to waste time, they all agree. Devin has expressed interest in giving their Chancellor Winters partnership another go. Lily feels hopeful, but she wants to be sure it's not based on emotion. Devin is taking a reasonable approach to the situation by wanting to start over. What if they both wind up in the same place? Lily worries. That won't happen, Devin says firmly. They decide to be completely forthright going ahead. They raise a cup of coffee to a toast. Stars of daytime dramas and their evil twins. Sally tells Nate at society that she's having stomach pains and isn't sure if it's normal. Nate is positive he has figured out what's going on. That unsettling fluttering is your unborn child's first movements. Sally understands that the baby's energy needs are being met by the food. Once he agrees to keep her pregnancy a secret and gives her advice about eating less and savoring the moment, she thanks him and he goes to get his takeout. Later, Adam shows up at society to meet Victor, and the two initially chat about the loss of Phyllis before shifting the conversation to Tucker's business. To add insult to injury, Victor says that Victoria has lost interest in buying McCall Unlimited. Adam tells his dad he can veto what she says. Victor recognizes that she was placed in charge for a purpose and will not disregard her authority. Adam ponders the futility of having to choose between her and himself.
He declares that he will pursue his own goals and that they should part ways. Lily and Devon talk about Daniel's loss at Devon's. Devon realizes from this whole ordeal with Phyllis how important it is to not let life pass you by. To his surprise, he admits, I asked Abby to move in with me. On the terrace of the coffee shop, Chance speculates that Dom would be thrilled to move in with Devon, a sentiment shared by Devon herself. It's not an issue for him. Abby recommends that Chance return to the Chancellor family home. She decides to go since she believes Nina doesn't want her there. When Dom pays Chance a visit, they've agreed to keep his room the same. Abby says her apologies to Chance, and she leaves. Nate walks into Victoria's Newman office. They discuss the previous night's event involving Phyllis. Elena is still looking for them, but he has to concentrate on his work at Newman. Victoria felt compelled to let him know she was abandoning her pursuit of McCall Unlimited. Nate wants to know what altered. Victoria's father is adamant about installing Adam if they buy the company, she says. She should not give her brother the keys to the kingdom. After returning to Crimson Lights, Adam overhears Sharon and Chance having a conversation. He sighs and starts to leave again, but Sally stops him. She wants to know why he has to leave so quickly and offers him a seat. Phyllis's death and Nick's well-being are topics of conversation. Sally claims he is emotionally distraught, particularly over summer. Adam suspects that she is envious of his sadness at Phyllis' death. Sally isn't, as co-parents, they share an unbreakable tie. Adam sits down with Sally and tells her that Victor had planned to buy the company he was going to run, but then changed his mind at the last minute. Sally regrets causing him pain yet again. She points out to him that he would now have to account to his father and be subject to Victoria's control if that had occurred. You can be successful without Victor. You only need yourself. Chance tells Sharon, Abby asked me what I thought about you and Dom moving in with Divan as they sit on the porch. He felt compelled to approve of it. Sharon assumes the situation was challenging. The odds say that it wasn't the case. Sharon finds that she feels relieved and astonished. He will suffer if you hold on to your resentment. Chance offers to cover the cost of counseling if she'll accompany him out to dinner instead. Laughing, she says, All right, supper. Lily visits Devan and brings up the fact that his ex-girlfriend now resides at his apartment. Do we really risk adding to Amanda's suffering by letting Abby move in? The desire to know the answer prompted Devon to approach Abby. It makes perfect sense for everyone to live in the same house as their loved ones. Abby shows up to Devon's after Lily leaves and informs him that she and Chance have gotten the go light to proceed. This is the finest news Devon had heard all day. Abby tells him she loves him and that she want to raise their son with him. And then there was a kiss. At Newman, Victoria laments to Nate that if McCall fails, Newman will suffer since her father will likely give the firm to Adam. I'm in the middle of a lose-lose predicament. Nate has no problem with that because it opens the market to potential buyers like Devin. They compliment one another and discuss their jobs. He takes great satisfaction in being the only person she's ever confided in outside herself. Does she have any plans to grow it? With a grin on her face, she says, just by one. When Nate smiles, he gets a grin in return. Nikki is relieved that the society has moved on from the McCall scandal so that Devon can purchase the business without interference. Victor admits to having lost interest in making any more business acquisitions. What occurred, Nikki wants to know. According to Victor, Devon is eager to return to Chancellor Winters. After Phyllis's passing, everyone is reevaluating their relationships with their relatives. As far as he is concerned, McCall Unlimited is still available, and he has no plans to spend any time away from Adam and the rest of his family. Adam and Sally argue at Crimson Lights over whether they're having a boy or a girl. Adam hopes for a daughter but will be happy with either gender. Sally just wants to eat in peace, but the kid won't allow her. The fact that she's still feeling queasy suggests that the newborn will probably have lots of hair. She apologizes that she scared him. It's inevitable, according to Adam. The paternal link between him and the child is unbreakable.